Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, I want to do a review on this Mantis MK1 Karambit. Um, interesting knife. Uh, right out of the gate, uh, I don't like it. There's a lot of reasons why I don't like it. I do like Karambits, and I'm a big fan of Karambits, and there's definitely some things this knife has going for it, but there's certainly enough things that dissuade me personally from picking this one over other ones. Alright, so let's get some of the basics out of the way, some specifications here. Um, our blade is two inches long. It is a uh, 420 HC or high carbon. Uh, it does not hold an edge at all. It's horrible. Uh, 420 HC is a very soft steel to begin with. Uh, the only company that I've ever seen do it right is Buck. Buck Knives does a 420 HC that actually works quite well. Actually, it will surpass some of the uh, you know better steels out there because of the fact that they go through the, the proper heat treat and I think they do a cryo treat on it too, but. Anyway, their 420C, or excuse me, 420HC is uh, is pretty decent. Uh, pretty much every other knife I've had with it sucks. It's just not good. It does not hold an inch. Uh, you can get it pretty sharp, but you literally will cut through two or three things and it'll be dull. Like dull to the point where you can rub your hand back and forth on it. So, um, not a good performing knife. That should end it right there, right? That's why we want our knives to be able to cut things. But there's more. <laughs> there's more to talk about here. All right, so our blade steel is not a great performing steel. This is a uh, chisel ground, as you can see here. Back is flat with a very, very light relief, but I still consider it chisel grounds. Our front, obviously a very extreme hawkbill, which uh, Karambit should be, um, traditionally. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, other dimensions, closed, 4.3 inches. Open, we have 5.5 inches, and the whole thing weighs 3.4 ounces. It's a 420HC blade, but a 420J2 uh, frame. So it's a stainless steel frame. It is a frame lock. See a very thick frame lock here. Um, the one thing that it has going for it the most is that it opens and locks very, very nicely. Um, the lockup is perfect on this. Nice thick frame lock. You can see that the cutout of the frame lock is actually almost the length of the whole knife. All right, but it works perfectly. There's the lockup. So I have no blade play though, so and trust me, I ripped through a lot of cardboard with this and I, I have not created any kind of blade play. Um, it's unfortunate that the blade steel is not a great performing steel because it does lock up beautifully. Um, <clears throat> besides that, let's see, what else can we talk about on this one? I don't know where to start. Uh, pocket clip. There's two different styles on the MK1 of pocket clip. I don't know if this is the first one or the second one, but um, this style, you can see, is a lot skinnier. All right, so we have you know our two screws here where the pocket clip mounts, and then obviously there's our pocket clip, right? Uh, being that skinny, you might think it's fragile. It's not fragile. It works beautifully. This is what's exposed out of the pocket. The problem I have with it, well, first off, the other style is a little bit fatter, but the other style is a fold-over style where the mounting part is underneath. So you have basically within the pocket clip the gap between the frame and the clip. On this one, it's free, so it does work fine. Whereas the other version where it's a fold-over, the heads of the screws are sticking up right here in between the frame and the pocket clip. Um, so I don't have personal experience with this, but more than one person have told me they had that model and that they had issues with the pocket clip snagging on their pants pocket because of the fact that the screws of the head were sticking up. So I guess if you did like this knife and you wanted to get one of these, I would probably try to get this version um, rather than the other one. The pocket clip is mounted where it's mounted. Um, I don't have that big of an issue with it, but I will point something out. Uh, like I said, it does function fine. Here's what's sticking up out of your pocket. Now, obviously I'm a right-handed uh, individual, so what I would do when I was taking this knife out is I would just do an overhand grip. I, generally speaking, I don't put my finger through that, that hole. You could, you could put it right through the, the ring, draw it out of the pants that way. Um, the problem is that it's a little awkward to open once your finger's in there. You can do it, but it's just a little more awkward as opposed to um, drawing it like this with the overhand and then just opening it and proceeding to get your grip with your finger through there if you felt you want to do that. The um, ergonomics are very good uh, in that the finger holes line up very nicely. It's very uh, comfortable for me. If you choose not to use the ring, it's still kind of comfortable. A little bit of a tight fit, uh, putting your finger over, but still you know, decent. It's not bad. All right, Very usable. Um, in reverse grip, it is also extremely comfortable with the ring. Uh, if you were not to use the ring, still, you have a decent grip on here. 
The problem is that some people who carry Karambit, you would carry it for its intended purpose of it being a uh, self-defense option. Uh, this is where this design really shines in a reverse grip for self-defense. Uh, how this mounts in your pocket, okay, like this, it's very hard to, to get your finger in a position where you're going to be drawing it like this um, and, you know, kind of whip it open in self-defense. Um, you can't manually open it in reverse grip very easily. All right, so it's just not, you know, maybe the, the best option for you if that's how you wanted to draw this knife. So the pocket clip orientation is something that some people may consider because of that. Uh, as far as utility use, it does work, at, you know, extreme hawk bill blade will work very nicely for utility. A lot of people stay away from it just because it's a little bit harder to sharpen, but with the rod system, it's just, it's not that bad. It's like any recurve or something like that. It's going to be harder than most blades, but with the proper equipment and the proper knowledge, it's, you know, six to one, half dozen the other. So that's not really a big issue for me. Um, the issue I have with this knife is that it, the whole thing feels very unfinished. I said ergonomics are good because they could be good. My thumb lands on the thumb ramp exactly how it should, you know, and this is going to go for anyone, if you have larger hands than me or slightly smaller hands, it's going to land in and about the same thing, okay? It's still comfortable by design. The problem is that all the edges are way too sharp on this. They're too abrupt, completely flat, completely flat, so this edge here is sharp, sharp enough to like cut through cardboard almost. Um, the whole fronts, all these edges, way too sharp. The cutouts in the handle, you know, they're grippy, but they're way too grippy. They're too sharp, all right? When you have a 90 degree angle like this, when it's dead on 90 degrees, that very edge, that tip is sharp. Think about it. It's like, you know, an edge, only it's just a much wider edge. So I, I would say this knife could vastly improve with some uh, some rounding of the edges, um, it, it dissuaded me enough where I didn't want didn't want to carry this or use it anymore because it actually it made my hand raw. Um, if you open it to open a, a letter or a box real quick, it's really not a big deal at all. Not even worth considering being uncomfortable. But when you actually use your knives and for in my purpose, I'm I'm purposely testing these and I'm cutting cardboard and paper and plastic and stuff like that, and my hand got ripped up. It really got really sore, so I did not like that. It was very uncomfortable in that respect. Um, if you're going to be using this for light duty, it's an option. Uh, price on these really range all over the place. I would say average is about 30 bucks. For $30, get something else. Trust me. Um, there's a lot of crambits out there, even, you know, falling uh, crambits in that price range. You're going to be much happier with something else. I can't talk to the other generations of this or the other models, the MK2 or MK3. There are other reviews on YouTube on these. Um, but the MK1 is just not for me. I, I think you're you're getting certain things in this. You're getting a nice design. You're getting a cool look. You know the um, you know black and red is really nice. Obviously the whole liner here is uh, red. It's like anodized titanium, or excuse me, not uh, titanium. Uh, anodized aluminum, and or it could be a, a tie coating on top of that stainless that gives you that anodization. So it's cool looking. Um, you know it's somewhat useful, but you're just not going to hold an edge, and it's super uncomfortable for using it. You know for for utility purposes for long durations of time so it's kind of a toss-up but for me I, I just don't like it I really don't like this uh, I have used other mantis knives that I have liked but this one is not a winner for me at all um, just my opinion obviously everyone has different opinions on the subject but I think you could do much much better out there for the uh, the price tag and I've seen these I mean I've seen them as cheap as 20 bucks the MK ones and as high as 50 or 60 dollars Please don't pay that much. If you really are interested in this type of knife or this design, try to find one for 20, 25 bucks because they're out there. All right, just look a little bit harder for it. But um, yeah, overall, just not not a fan of this particular one. I do like the uh, the Mantis um, Caramba Song, I guess you can call it. It's the folding ballast song Carambit. Much, much higher quality in and around the same price tag too. So stay tuned for that review. I'll have that uh, you know fairly soon coming up. Um, much, much better than this. If you're looking at a small folding karambit that you're actually going to be using for utility purposes, uh, I would just stay clear of this one. So, unfortunately, not a great review, but it's not really a great knife. Uh, it's not total garbage or crap, but um, certainly not my favorite. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoy the review. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you soon.